and good evening everybody and welcome to another teacher talk session tonight tonight uh, we are going to have our 52nd session and all tonight and we are going to have uh, another teacher from different part of the world tunisia and she's Sondes garbi and she is a british council esl teacher and also celta and delta qualified teacher and also today we are also having some technical problems uh, sorry about it uh, so sad for this one but we will uh, figure it out i hope Yes. I, uh, how about I, now? Can you hear me now? Is it better? Yes, I can. Okay. Yes, so, lovely. yeah, great. Wonderful. And so sorry about this connection problem. Sometimes it's happening, uh, especially these days. I'm really sorry, Sondes, about it. Happened, uh, is it possible to recover the second question, Sondes? <laughs> what was your favorite moment or experience in your own education? Sure. So I was, uh, I was telling you about my math teacher who who was a great teacher but sometimes I have to ask my father to repeat a few things for me in a way it would I would understand it better and my father was the one who showed me cool tricks that would solve uh, math problems much faster in a way I can skip steps and get the same result mm -hmm. and one day my teacher asked me to solve a problem on the board but um, I, I went out and solved the problem. Instead of filling the board with all the steps, I skipped mm -hmm. the steps and the board was half full, half empty. <laughs> and um, the, then he was checking other students' uh, 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 work. And I, uh, he was like, but Sunday, did you go out? I asked you to solve the problem. I was like, yeah, it's already solved. Where is it? But I don't know. Okay. And then he went out to the board. He was like, hmm, how did you go from here to here? I was like, oh, you do this and this and this, and then you get this and this. That's how you get that. But where is it? It's here. But you should write it. Well, it's there. Um, okay, who taught you this? I said, my father. I didn't teach you this. I said, no, you didn't teach me this. Uh, but who told you to do it this way? I said, it's my father. Did I tell you that? No, it's my father. I was like, I have to meet your mother. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, no problem. I'm solving it correctly, though. He was like, yes, yeah, still I have to, to meet your father. Here at this stage, now that I am a teacher like him, I understand that uh, there are people who are more conservative in a way they do not like being challenged with cool things. They mm -hmm. do not like... Um, skipping steps if you want to they want to have everything clear on the board on in the exam sheet or anywhere they want they want you to uh, to solve problems I mean I respect that on the other hand coming from the background that I come from I am an engineer a teacher have been almost everywhere on the world I have to admit I'm okay with criticism whenever there is a problem there are different ways you can solve it um, I mean, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> all ways lead to Rome. You don't have one way to do it. And there is no one correct answer. And I, I, feel, I feel it's okay to tell me, I don't like your idea. I feel it's this way or that way, as long as the person is respectful and ha can, can have a debate with all the respect in the world. I'm fine with that. But the way my the way my teacher reacted to me being cool and fast, I was like, it, it took me time to understand where he was coming from. Actually, <laughs> this is a nice story, Sondes. Thank you very much to share it yeah, with that's us. Thank you. That's nice. Thank you for your question. <laughs> You're welcome. And Sondes, I would like to mention a little bit about the. COVID is, and the yeah. effects of COVID. Yeah, you, as you know, that the whole world are really, you know, they're facing kind of a trouble because mm -hmm. of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And we are all, you know, change our education systems from face-to-face -to, -face to online. Right. And right now we are uh, doing it online. What about uh, you? What do you think about this distance education? 
to be honest with you, it's a love and hate mm -hmm. relationship. You know, at some point, whenever we go every day to work, it'd be like, oh, I can't <laughs> go to work anymore. When you sit at home and you, you teach uh, online, you'd be like, oh, I don't want to do online anymore. So it's the same. It's more or less whenever it becomes a routine, you get to a point where you want to change. That's human nature. We can't do anything about it. But on the other hand, for, for me, if I'm teaching online, it reduces the uh, commute time for everybody, basically, not only for me. <laughs> uh, and it gives you time to do other things. But on the other hand, you stay at home more, which, which is not really <laughs> great. Um, you, can, you cannot see your students and colleagues because uh, my students prefer to have their cameras off. It can force them to switch them on mm -hmm. unless they have to. I have um, a mini whiteboard where I show them, <laughs> right? Oh. Uh, that's, that's for the younger uh, students, like nine-year-olds. They have to write things and stuff and show me and uh, stuff. <laughs> but whenever it comes to... to um, to teenagers and young young adults and adults, I don't use I don't need them to switch on big camera unless they're beginners. Beginners, as you can see here, you see, I'm I was teaching <laughs> adult beginners and I have to teach them. Oh, I or elementary I wearing yeah. I am um, wearing. So basically, oh, I, I see. do this in um, while teaching. Um, also, I think um, you cannot see your colleagues, which is the, another thing that people miss. I do miss personally. Uh, also, uh, we miss the school noise. I think I posted recently about the school noise where people are, I mean, uh, students are participating, working together, maybe teasing each other. And you have a cheeky boy that tells you a cheeky thing. And then you have somebody who is knocking to ask something. <laughs> Then you have the, the, the bell and blah, and you all you know all that that noise. I like everybody else. I miss it, uh, uh, and the, this is the the huge minus that I feel affects everybody is that you are all day long sedentary. You don't move that much. You do not have time. Uh, I mean, you do have time to go to do uh, things. For example, uh, uh, go have a cup of coffee or whatever it is but then most of the time you're sitting in class you're moving around yeah exactly and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that affects I think your posture and uh, by the end of the day you have a backache um, another thing that I learned I mean I, um, I learned back in Delta and this kind of emphasized it is your instructions have to be written on the screen you don't have to <laughs> Otherwise, if you are speaking and your voice is breaking online because of uh, a bad uh, connection or bad, bad internet, you'll be like, ah, teacher, we didn't understand you. Okay, look at, the, uh, look at my screen. That's the task. Take a picture and yeah. start. You don't have to talk that much. It reduces your TTT, uh, teacher talking exactly. time. And students, even though if you are... Um, uh, disconnected, totally disconnected. Your students know what they are going to do. Maybe they have to do it alone with a partner. They have an idea. You're, they are not totally. Ah, what are we going to do? <laughs> oh, let's tease each other, and then it leads to 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 online bullying and blah blah blah. It, I mean, I I have to have them kind of um, uh, not focused, but I, I give them an aim. Even though mm -hmm. I am not there, I have a problem with a microphone, I have a, whatever problem I have, take a picture or you read it, fine, you can do it. In a way, I don't waste time. Even if I come back later after two, three, five minutes, okay, yeah. what did you think of? What did you talk about? What, even if you didn't talk about, what did you think of? Give me some answers. So that helps me in a way mm -hmm. to reduce my TTT and have have students move forward without having to go backward. Oh, what did I say? Remind me, what was it? No, you just move forward. So I that's see. something that 
uh, teaching online taught, not taught me, but kind of emphasized. <laughs> I see. Thank you very much, Sonia. It's very uh, useful ideas about distance education. My other point is, you know, as you know, that it's really difficult uh, motivate the students to online learning. Uh, especially in this uh, distance education. So what do you suggest to the teachers to motivate their students for online learning? Um, here my question, I mean, is which age group do you have in mind? I mean, um, if you're talking about adults, adults beg to be modif I mean, to, to, to learn online or to learn English in general. So motivation mm -hmm. is already sky high <laughs> so we don't yeah, need really right. to motivate them but if you're talking about younger learners whenever it comes to primary students as mm -hmm. I mentioned um, I have my mini whiteboard and they have I for example if you're doing the spelling bee and they have to show you uh, it depends if they have instead of uh, saying the sentences and you have those dominant students who blurt <laughs> their 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 answers they have to be quiet and uh, write their answers and be like okay good job you're fast but pay attention to your spelling for example or something like that and mm -hmm. also fast finishers can show the answer to their friends in a way they can uh, they can kind of copy and cheat but it's okay, they are learning from each other. In a way, they are busy, so they are not sitting and fiddling around. Yeah, oh, there is a pen, oh, there is something. No, 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 you have something to do. You have, you have a mini whiteboard. Also, if we're talking, I'm still talking about primary students. Um, I have a scavenger hunt. I don't know, yeah. do you have an idea what a scavenger hunt is? Yeah, of course, yeah, 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 of Online, course. online. <laughs> Do you have an idea what scavenger is online? That? Do you have huh? an idea what scavenger hunt is online? Yeah. Online? Ah, no, not on online. No, 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 not online. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so online, basically, you can ask your students to stand up in, in kind of class. They have to stand up and then go and bring me something orange. Go and bring me something round. Go and bring me something pink. Go and uh -huh. bring me something interesting. Go and bring me something alive. So you have cats, dogs, brothers, sisters, moms, dads, <laughs> and a lot of things come alive. Um, so scavenger hunt, I use them as uh, not settlers, the opposite of settlers. What is it? I forgot. You know, to make them... Uh, move around what? between activities in a way you don't have those fiddly young people. You go ask them to bring you something like oh something blue, something I don't know, uh, black and mm -hmm. da da da. In a way, they move around and then you sit down and you can move on to the next activity. So this is what I called a call a uh, scavenger online scavenger hunt, uh, and also. It's really hard to do pair work and group work with primaries. So here, uh, breakout rooms is out of question. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's a big, it's, it's a hard no, basically. But I would say um, a shared document in which they do cooperative work. Of course, you need a lot of time to help them with the computer especially mm -hmm. that you don't speak in i speak only uh, uh, english i don't speak any other language with my students um that's when they oh they see they see somebody is writing something under their name for example i i write uh, uh, mr mr inner and then mr inner starts typing something and i see my name and i can't find it i have to find it i have to find something where <laughs> how do i use my computer to do it so kind of I'm you. I'm forcing them to use technology to express, kind of express, do the activity that I'm asking them to do. Basically, even though they are primary students and they don't know how to use a computer, mm -hmm. it's kind of, you know, motivating to find a way to <laughs> do things on the computer. That is, uh, those are for uh, primary. Um, oh, also for primaries, we have uh, online games. Oh, they love Blue Kit. Blue Kit.com, B-L-O-O-K-E. Blue Kit. 
Ah, I uh, see. Dot com. Okay. Oh, my goodness, they love it. They love uh, quizzes. Q Q U I Z E Z Z dot com. Jeez, they 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 they, they melt. So they they don't want to do anything but play online. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they I, love I, games. Tell me about it. <laughs> um, it's it's something I don't know if you have you heard of Kahoot. Yeah, of course. We, I, 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 you know, we're playing it for a long time, like years with my kids. I know yeah, it's a very fantastic are, game. These are different versions of Kahoot with different uh, 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 kind of uh, characters and fancy schmutti mutis and stuff. It, it's quite interesting for them, but for me, it's the same, <laughs> same thing. <laughs> question, answer, question, answer. Um, I mean, whenever we move, so those were ideas for, young, for not for young learners, but for mm -hmm. primaries. But whenever we talk about secondaries, mm -hmm. um, I would go for topics of interest. Because when we talk about primaries, we are talking about basic, basic English. I can't really ask them, what do you want to talk <laughs> about? No, I have to go, you know t-shirts and trousers and whatever but whenever we are talking about uh older kids teenagers they know what they want yeah. they know what they yeah, like of course and here at the at the beginning of a term uh, uh, uh i do an, a needs analysis and uh i pick up on the topics of interest and then i try to cater those topics during the term um, mm -hmm. I do not teach in a, a state school or private school. I, have, we have, I teach at the British Council where we have terms. So here, um, every term we have uh, new students or even old students, but still I have to do uh, needs analysis. So topics of interest keep them uh, interested. Again, um, uh, online games, they love it. Uh, uh, cooperative work uh, uh, on a share, shared document mm -hmm. works with them wonders. Yes. And then uh, the interac interaction pattern has to change mm -hmm. in, uh, in breakout rooms where you have fair work, group work, uh, whether it is speaking or typing on a uh, shared document. So here the, the tricks are a bit different. I see. I see. Okay. Thank you, Sonde, for this lovely uh, and, and suggestions that you made to us and about this uh, motivating our students mm -hmm. for each level. So there's it. Uh, someone asks you something here. Azra okay. says, may introduce some ideas to make balance between during the online class activities and home activities in the university level. Thank you. Do you have any idea for that? And you say home activities, is that... Home? I mean, she means homework, I think. Assignment, homework, I think. But can she or he clarify this, please? Yeah, can you see the question? It's here. Uh -huh. May I introduce some ideas to make balance between during online class activities and uh, home activities in university level many thanks uh unfortunately i cannot see the comments okay okay it's okay. okay so what happened to my oh there we go so basically if uh, can you repeat the question again for me please she asked uh, like assignment yes she she wrote it down she said i mean Assignment, she said. Introduce some ideas to make balance between during online class activities and assignment activities in university level. When you say balance, does that mean uh, students have to 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 do? Is that flipped classroom? Does this person mean flipped classroom? No, I I don't know actually. <laughs> she uh, no asked the question. But I think uh, that's kind of, as she, she wrote their assignment, like she wanted to ask you the question that should be balance. I mean, any ideas to have the balance between online class activities and home activities, which means assignment for her, yeah, for university students. 
Okay, so basically she wants or he wants homework uh, to be done online, the way mm -hmm. I understand it, right? So um, here, I think, I think the input, if, if I, I know that uh, a lot of teachers have a lot of input and they don't have time for the output, which is the assignments where you can see um, where you can see whether students understood or not, that if you, you want to see the, uh, I mean, how they can use what you taught them, um, mm -hmm. then, then uh, of course, you can use, for example, you can share a Google, uh, Google Docs uh, link where, I, this is what I do, basically. I... I use my own account, not the work account. I use my own account because it's easier to share. And then you have a Google Docs link. Uh, mm -hmm. In this Google Docs, I write my students' names. I, on top of that, I write the instructions to, uh, of the assignment. So instructions, criteria of assessment. For example, if you write a paragraph including the pres present simple mm -hmm. and uh, including what we 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 studied um, i don't know what we studied present simple and something else for example two things you covered during the the hour or two uh, or an hour and a half so th this is what i'm going to focus on so instructions criteria of assessment names of students mm -hmm. and then each one who will click on that link you, of course you have to make the link public not private, in a way, for example, if Vulcan uh, comes in and he wants to, to type his assignment on the Google Docs, they can do it. And if Mr. Inner, who is not Vulcan, <laughs> again, he's another, another classmate of Vulcan, he can come and type his assignment here. Basically, they can see each other's work and they can type in the same document. Uh, quizzes, look at, and um, I think Kahoot, they allow you to give, even though they are online games for us, they can, you can have a version, an assignment version, a homework version, in mm -hmm. a way students have to sign into their own account to have their name. And yes. whenever they play that game, their name is linked to the, uh, to, to, to the game and the results are going to give, be given to you under that name. So it's kind of a game, kind of an assignment. It's a fun one, but still for you, you can see whether they can, they understood the, the, what you, 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 you taught them or not, or whatever assignment you were uh, you, you yeah. want to uh, give them. I see. She said, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Zondes, about it. Thank you very much. And my next question uh, is about uh, Celta and Delta. You know, right. as a teacher or who wants to be teacher or whatever, if you want to uh, really care about your professional growth, like uh, these terms are really important for uh, mm -hmm. teachers. Mm -hmm. Like, should teachers and ELT teachers and get CELTA and DELTA certificates and why and what are their advantages as a, as a, as a CELTA and DELTA tutor, what are your ideas about it? So let me be clear. I didn't study English. Me personally, I have never studied English at university. What I did on the other hand is I am an engineer. I studied engineering. That's my degree and my only degree. I mean, first degree. On the other hand, I uh, I studied or I had the course of CELTA and there you learn pedagogy and the practical bits and bobs. DELTA is about the how and why in depth of, the, uh, of, mm -hmm. of, of teaching and you have a lot of theories, you have a lot of methodology, and you cover a lot of things. Um, so first of all, let's make sure that if you have good English, right? Good English meaning you can talk with somebody else yeah. without studying it at school, 
or without studying it at university not school you can have the CELTA uh, certificate and the DELTA uh, uh, what are the advantages as I said so CELTA is about practical bits and bobs of teaching so how do you do this what do you call this I, I know how to do this but I don't have a name for it what do you do uh, how do you how can I do this better so you have tutors or teach or, or trainers who are going to guide you through how to do things better in class and how to write a better lesson plan, how to, to the, the way we should think as teachers and how to address any, any, any problem that arises uh, in the classroom. Um, so basically, the CELTA is your first step into mm -hmm. pedag pedagogy, yeah. the way I, I see it. Maybe other people do not, uh, do not agree with me, but that's the way I see it. It's not about uh, learning English. It's not about helping you to, uh, to progress in any way. Delta, on the other hand, gives you in-depth knowledge and analysis of what you are teaching. So in I module see. one, you have, you have terminology and you have to define a lot of things and you have to remember a lot of things. Module two is about, uh, about uh, uh, teaching and face-to-face. -face. I mean, either with, whether it is online or face-to-face, -face, it's more about uh, uh, why you're doing this in class based on which methodology and you have to prove to us that you know the background of this, this way of teaching or whatever you're doing. Mo module three is about writing a syllabus or you have two options in module three or uh, management. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally chose uh, writing a syllabus of uh, an exam. Uh, other people can choose to go into management. I mean, I see. That's, that's a choice and uh, it's something you have to uh, to pick, make up your mind before choosing mm -hmm. but in any case you have a lot of reading to do and it helps you understand better why it is done that way so CELTA it is this is the right way to do it and that's it the Delta it gives you the why of it I see right? now let's mm -hmm. go about the practical things I mean, not practical, but the ups and downs of both uh, things. Both of them are expensive. <laughs> yeah, we know it. <laughs> really. It's not given. It's expensive. You have to have a little bit, I mean, put some money aside to have these courses. They are intensive. They are not for you to go and discover the, the country or anything. You literally dream, eat breathe whatever you're studying you don't have time to meet your friends you don't have time for any freaking thing nothing so basically if you're studying it you're studying it. you have nothing else to do in your life you stop your life right. um on the other hand you have to be aware of the fact that some schools and some countries do not recognize them for example i am in my own country uh, the only diploma that is recognized is the engineering diploma. The Cambridge right. diplomas are not recognized. Oh, okay? So please, please, please be aware of this. If you're looking for a job and uh, the, 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 the country says you have to have the CELTA and it's okay not to have your first degree, great. But these countries are few. If the country or the, the school says you have, you have to have your first degree and we don't, uh, we don't care about the CELTA or the DELTA, that's not the way, that's not where you should go. Mm -hmm. okay. So please bear in mind, they are not cheap. They are worth every penny you're going to put, to, to put in them. And... Um, that schools and uh, I mean, different schools and countries have different criteria, recruitment criteria. Before mm -hmm. before investing in this, know what you want. I see. 
Thank you, Sundes, about it. It's really useful <laughs> suggestions about Delta I and Delta. And uh, I would like to move to another question. So, which is, as far as I know, uh, I think your special educational needs tutor. Am I right? That's correct. Um, so, what is a special educational needs course, and how does it help when teaching ESL students? Sure. So, SEM, special educational needs, SEM uh, course mm -hmm. is about raising awareness about different uh, needs that students may have in your class. Most mm -hmm. students come <clears throat> with what I mean from whatever background. You never know where they are from and what they have in their lives. You never know. Uh, that is that uh, is that a person coming from a war country you never know is that a person who come who is uh, who has adhd dyslexia dyspraxia you never know it's not physical it's inside you don't see it of mm -hmm. course with time you see the behavior you see the writing or maybe speaking or reading uh, abilities are not as high as the others and here you once once you know what the student has especially a young learner primary student older ones i mean uh, um, older students uh, teenagers and adults are not problematic as much as the younger ones so here <coughs> so here it, it's worthwhile having a list of uh, uh, tricks mm -hmm. and tips to apply in in a class whenever you know what the you have sorry to say this but you have a name for what the I mean whatever syndrome whatever um, thing I mean a, a special need the student has mm -hmm. ADHD autism it depends whatever you have oh, i see and then uh based on this on this course you you know uh how to adapt your lesson plan and to cater the classes need and that one student's need so the lesson plan is different from the other lesson plans the classroom management again is different um it's also it also allows you to know how to raise awareness among students about the difference between the class and miss or mrs x this young man or this young lady it's it also helps you teach tolerance to the other i mean to to kind of normal kids i mean it's mm -hmm. really bad saying this um because you know I mean, we were young and we saw somebody different. Most most of young people would be like, look, different. Let's make fun of it. Unfortunately, here, this course helps you to kind of make people, uh, young people understand the difference and accept it. I see. Um, <clears throat> so I can give you an example. Uh, when I was in Kuala Lumpur, uh, I in 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 one class I had a student. There were two students who had S, who were SEN. One had Asperger's uh, mm -hmm. syndrome, so it's a notch. It's a bit similar to 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 autism, but it's it's a bit. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's a bit easier to deal with them. I see. And uh, I, the other student who was HD, I mean, had HD, ADHD, mm -hmm. and both of them were in the same class. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. uh, so here I asked for a, a an assistant. I couldn't have two assistants in one class. I had only one. So That's one had to deal with the ADHD student the, the the student didn't didn't know how to the final uh, the fine motor skills were bad so I asked 
uh, the mother to bring a tablet and he can write and give me the answer I see. Uh, on a tablet instead of writing with a pen. Uh, so there were, there were a few things that mm -hmm. I had to ask from the mother. And also I used the reward charts in a way I can, I can motivate the student to behave in class. So mm -hmm. the ADHD student to behave, not be like, <laughs> la, 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 la. I see. So here, uh, there was a lot of cooperation and, uh, uh, work between me and the, the mother. And the other, uh, the other student, uh, words didn't work with him. If you I come see. and sit with the young man, they wouldn't look at the, this person wouldn't look at you in the eyes. No way. Oh. Listening mm -hmm. was like, it, it's, 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 no. You talk about whatever you want, nothing goes in. So I was like, oh, well, I have 20 students in class, I can't do this. I'm not moving forward, I'm not teaching anything. What am I going to do? And, and after talking to the mother, understanding where the, I mean, what the student had, and then the mother, based on the, uh, I can't remember the exact name of the doctor, psychiatrist, psychologist. I'm not a specialist in these. Oh, I see. Yeah, but I see. based on okay. the recommendations, I had to make small kind of cut-ups, laminate mm -hmm. them. And then instead of speaking to calm the, the student down, I had to put the, the picture right under his nose so he can understand what mm. I want from him because listening was not there once he was hyper he was hyper and all all walls are built nothing works I stop my lesson I can waste a lot of time but whenever you put just a small picture with whatever it is that the the, the doctor suggested <laughs> I have no problem let's move on <laughs> real and, well mm -hmm. and all of this um, just uh, to, to tell you that the course raises awareness about different cases there are in society, not in mm -hmm. class, but in society in general. I see. And how you can apply small, small tip, tips and tricks. Uh, and, and, and if this doesn't work, try this. If you don't, then, 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 then. And, 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 and the parents are usually... Uh, welcoming and 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 they can help you with a lot of ideas you can call the the doctor and um, again I can't mm -hmm. even remember which one is psychologist psychiatrist they can help you with ideas and it's the most rewarding thing you can do in life having two students mm -hmm. two SEM students and tw and 20 others in class to teach them the same thing at the same time wow Thank you very much on this. It's really a very, you know, it's great, you know, the experience that you had and you shared that moment with us about that SEN uh, related with that one. Thank you very much. It's really wonderful. Thank you. And my next uh, question is really, you know, it's something uh, took my attention. Mm -hmm. It was one of your, one of your share on LinkedIn. It mm -hmm. was about like some kind of hexagonal thinking so like can you tell us about hexagonal thinking <laughs> and uh, how does it help uh, students in their speaking and writing it's really interesting look okay so do you have an idea about what a ma ma mind math is yeah sure yeah so hexagonal thinking is a fancy way to have a mind map. So basically a mind map looks like this. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, of course. And uh, these are my ideas about whatever topic you're, you're, you, I give you the same topic and then you have different ideas and your mind map will be mm -hmm. similar to this, right? Okay. But, uh, so be, let me go uh, backwards a bit before I, I start talking about this. So hexagonal uh, thinking, um, you and me are, I mean, it took us a lot of time to organize our ideas. This is linked to this because of this. This is mm -hmm. linked to this because of this. This is how I yes. see it. This is the logic behind it, right? Mm -hmm. 
But whenever we are younger, let's say we are 13, 18, mm -hmm. you have the ideas. Yes. They don't go anyhow together. You see? <laughs> yeah, I see. So, yeah, they work together and explain to you in a way it's, I cannot, you, there is no, how can I put it? Younger, I mean, teenagers, I mean, yeah, primaries, I wouldn't go to primaries to do this, but the background knowledge is there. They have some ideas about the big problems. They do. I see. How are they linked? That's a different question. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea here is to help them link those islands. So the islands are mm -hmm. spread everywhere. Those ideas, those topics are spread everywhere in their minds. And the idea of hexagonal thinking is to link this to that, this to this. How are they linked? Explain mm -hmm. them with the right word not however I want, I'll throw whatever English I have. And that's how it works. That's my logic. Uh -huh. And I did mm -hmm. that with my pre-intermediate students last week. I was like, no, if you don't explain it to me, this idea goes out. Right? I so see. that's the main, the main aim of this uh, activity. Not activity, but it can be a lesson. It can be activity. It depends what, where you want to put it. I see. So let me come closer to you. So as you okay. can see here, so this is linked to this because I'm, I'm, I can't read, unfortunately, whenever I'm holding No, we, we can see it. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I can't read. You can see I can't oh. read. <laughs> okay. So for example, this is linked to this because whatever, let me read it. So here, ah, yeah, jobs are important in, uh, in our lives. Uh, and good economy. Here I have good economy. How can you link these two? Uh, how are they linked? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, I tell them. So if we have jobs, it helps the economy of the country. If you don't have jobs, again, it, it doesn't help anyhow. That's how it helps. So it's really hard for students to see the link here. And mm -hmm. for example, if we have a good economy, we have uh, many products, we can have GMOs, we can have a lot of export, bad economy, we can have a, a crisis here, and uh, many immigrants, many companies, and so on and so on. I see. Um, this is on the mind map, but whenever you have hexagons, let me, I, I'll use my, my mini whiteboard, hang on. <laughs> sure. So whenever you have hexagons like this, so you write the topic and then the hexagons are cut-ups. So I give them to cut the hexagons, right? Another topic. They don't have to put the link here. They don't have to put a line here. The line I is see. no. Okay, so in the end, they end up with a lot of hexagons like this. And uh, they, they have to explain the link between them. And they, they, they stick them, like, physically mm -hmm. with the paper. They stick them together, right? I see. And, uh, they, of course, when I come, I have, they have to explain the link between them. And then they take a picture. They bring their phones, of course, for a reason. Not to chat on Facebook or whatever. <laughs> they take a picture. So, of course, you have the mind map, a bigger one in hexagons, not in my math, like this one, mm -hmm. right? And then I asked them to mix up the hexagons they have, all the topics they have. Oh. And then they have to go to another pair's cut-ups and try to think what their logic was. Mm, I see. And then after 10... 15 minutes, it depends how fast they are. If they are pre-intermediate, it will be difficult. If they are advanced, they will be like, tch, 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 can they do it together? Uh, they will do it faster. When, when you ask them, uh, uh, if, uh, okay, was it easy to link those ideas together? Before that, was, uh, was it easy to find ideas? They say, yes, why? 
because we don't know a lot of things. Background knowledge is lacking. I see. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, yes. fine. Okay, you took a lot of time, you Googled it, you found them some, some ideas, you put them together. Now, was it easy to go to the other pair's hexagons that you found, I mean, the, the topics are already there, and to link them the same way they showed mm -hmm. you in the picture. No, my logic is very differ different from the logic of my friends. Or some of I them see. said, no, my logic is quite similar. So, in the end, what should we work on? I asked them. It, is it just the the knowledge that we have and how to link it and or communication and uh, oh sorry how can i how do you it? so uh what should we do to have a lot of ideas about different topics we should we should read more to have better background knowledge now uh is it easy to communicate with others when we have disorganized ideas they said yes does this activity uh, 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 does this activity help you organize your, your ideas? They said yes. Is it easy to, to organize the, your ideas the same way as your friends? They said no. Our no. ideas are a bit different, not exactly the same. So this helps people or students, younger students, to, to organize their ideas in, in their, and speak mm -hmm. better and write better, especially the exam students. Oh, I see. Wow. It's very, <laughs> this is my first time I've listened to this hexa, hexagonal thinking and it's really nice, very, I'm impressed about it. Thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Sondes, about it. It's really nice and I hope that I will have a chance to use it <laughs> oh, uh, I, in I, my I, classes. I, uh, I uh, posted it about, I think it was last Monday, so uh, the idea is still recent. Okay, thank you very much uh, about it. So let's move another question on this okay so my next question uh, is uh, what uh, do you think is the most challenging issue in education today i think uh, i would rephrase it in a way what is lacking in education i wouldn't okay. call it an issue i would say mm -hmm. something that is lacking I think it's 21st century skills. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we are in a capitalist era and everybody have to find a job at some point in their life. I see. And 21st century skills are not really uh, talked about uh, or known. I mean, the, 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 the parents have never heard about them the teachers may have heard about them they are not mm -hmm. trained and students are there just uh, as i can read on online they are just getting a lot of input and there is very little output so what yeah. are 21st century skills those 21st century skills help you uh uh, in your own learning and innovation. So, which means that it helps you with critical thinking, problem solving, communication, collaboration, creativity, and innovation. If that is number one. Number two is digital literacy. Digital yes. literacy is, is, uh, is information literacy, media literacy, uh, information communication technologies literacy. So basically mm -hmm. how to use Anything that any machines that we have, computers, uh, phones, tablets, whatever it is, for my own needs or whatever needs that I uh, uh, of my school, my my work, it depends. And also number three, career and life skills. Everybody is studying to work at some point, unfortunately. <laughs> and I mean, I believe I'm not going to say that it's the same in Turkey, but I believe a lot of people are the same here. We come out of school or university would be like, what is, how do we write it? How do we write the motivation letter? How do we write a CV? Uh, how, how, how to, to, to be prepared for the work life? I see. 
productivity, accountability, cross-cultural interaction, uh, uh, self-direction, initiative, all those kind of things. Nobody taught us. You and me are old to know a few things. But unfortunately, when we came out of university or graduated, we were like, I don't know how to write a CV. I don't know how to write a motivation letter. What should I do at work? Okay, I do this task, but after that, what am I supposed to do? So right. this is something that should be taught more in, uh, in schools and be talked about to parents and teachers. I see. I see. Kind of a life skills we need to also mm -hmm. learn about. It. Thank you, Sondes, about these uh, suggestions. And what about... Uh, oh, we are almost coming to end our live session, by the way. <laughs> I checked the time. Time flies. Just a couple questions left. Uh, okay, so let me uh, ask you the, another uh, question to you. Uh, Sondes, if you could have one superpower to use in the classroom, what would it be and how would it help? This is the question and <laughs> something that I really, really, really have a problem with because I can't be a super teacher i have to be a super teacher in here and a super tiny teacher in there it depends on the role or the the who you want to be in different times at in class sometimes you want to be a role model sometimes you have to be the strict person sometimes you mm -hmm. have to be this you have to be that you can't be a superhero in one area you have to be a superhero in this small area, in that small area. So basically, unfortunately, I can't be a superhero. I have to be a tiny hero here. And <laughs> I, 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 that's how, the way I see it anyway. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. That's a very sure. good point about it, Sondes. Thank you. So uh, what about, you know, Nowadays, I mean, like not a normal days, for a long time, you know, this there are always new trends comes out for in ELT area. Like, which learning trends uh, capture your attention the most, and why? Like mobile learning, project based learning, game based learning, or etc. So, as I mentioned earlier, the I like twenty first cent the idea of twenty first century skills. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we have to work at some point in our lives. It's inevitable. So here, the closest thing that uses those skills is, uh, is uh, TBL or uh, what mm -hmm. is it? Task-based task, task -based uh, learning, learning mm -hmm. or teaching. And uh, task-based learning is student-based by default. I see. Uh, and why I like it? Well, because I... You'll laugh, please don't, but I know you. No, no. <laughs> because I don't do anything in class, my students do everything. All what I have to do is monitor, 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 and sometimes wonder why I'm a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want, huh? Doing everything, everything is done, because students. <laughs> students are working, I have nothing to do. I yeah. have to monitor, That's it. If everything is working fine, <laughs> Yeah, you have a fantastic day. <laughs> yeah, so that's wonderful. why I like TBL. Oh, great. Thank you very much for your idea about it on this. And last two questions. And, all right. And uh, here it gets go. What are your favorite three websites to suggest to use in teaching? Okay. So a lot of us have a lot of problems with classroom management. Sit down, listen, be quiet, help him. No, no, don't do that. Listen, blah, blah, blah. So we have a lot of problems with classroom management. Class Dojo would eliminate all those, those ideas. So one point, nice, good job. Keep doing it. Here is five points. <laughs> uh, who wants to, I remember once with the, this reward system or it was, uh, I didn't, we didn't have class Dojo. I had to draw it. And uh, the quietest students in my class talked for the first time after six months. 
Wow. Thanks to, I'll give 30 points to that. <laughs> <laughs> give a presentation in front of the class. Who wants to do it? Wonderful. That is the one who was the first one to do it. So, wow. yes, Class Dojo is your, your go-to whenever it comes to classroom management and, uh, and, uh, and uh, encouraging students to do better. Uh, look at B-L-O-O-K-E-T.com and quizzes.com uh, for revision and for things that are related to uh, mm -hmm. uh, assignments as the lady or the gentleman asked earlier. Yeah. Uh, teachlist.com I think uh, for free activities and and PPP lessons not TBL but PPP lessons mm -hmm. and British Council website have uh, teens, kids and learn uh, English I think it's called for supplementing ideas just in case you're short of ideas I see thank you very much thank you very much from this and uh, Nilgün, Nilgün says something about us. Sondes has a calming effect and she radiates positive vibes. It was nice to see you on this page. Thanks for this beautiful session. Welcome. Thank you, Nilgün. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nilgün. Is that her name or his name? Her name. Her name, Nilgün. Okay. Nice Thank to meet you, you Nilgün. <laughs> It's great to hear this thing. Okay, and the last question, Sonde. Yay! Ready for it? <laughs> and the most, the most difficult one. Ready for it? No. <laughs> ah, okay then. <laughs> Great. So, what, what is, is your? And the last question is, what is your motto? Be a great teacher. Oh, okay. <laughs> Be a great teacher. Both yes. Teachers and students should have fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But it's not easy to uh, it's not easy to uh, get there. With time, it's it you will get there. But you need uh, you need to work on it and to have fun in class. But yeah, that's it. Easy. Okay, wonderful. It's great. Thank you very much for this great motto. Be a great teacher. All right. Okay. So that's all. Uh, so that's for really? tonight. Really? And... No. I yeah. Good night. No, not yet. No, no, not like that. We, of course, we are <laughs> going to talk about a little bit. And before, uh, would you like to? Would you like to add something? And before I finish our finishing our live sessions on this. I think. I think if you're. I think one of your questions that um, we should have. Uh, I think something was related to CPT. Uh, uh, what is it? Professional development. Oh, yeah. So if you're, you're, you want to uh, be a great teacher and innovate and have uh, an engaged class and you, ha you want to have fun yourself, not only your students should have fun, but also you, please, please, please follow Mr. Inner or another name for Mr. Inner is Vulcan. <laughs> or you have to, or you should follow myself Uh, and also please ask your 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 colleagues for ideas tips and tricks please do not hesitate to ask anybody that is online for ideas we will be happy to post anything that would help you to have fun and more uh, uh, interesting class uh, or lesson in class nice thank you thank you very much and uh, fun this Someone asked you where is she from? She's from Tunisia. Uh, the neighboring. Uh, sorry. The neighboring country. Ah, the neighboring country. Yeah, oh. she's from Tunisia, the neighboring country. You are right. <laughs> okay, so thank you. I would like to say a thank you, uh, Sondes, to to become uh, my guest tonight. <laughs> the pleasure. And it was it was really great, and it was really fruitful sessions, and. Uh, You shared your ideas, suggestions, and of especially the most important, your your time, your precious time you spent with us here, almost an hour. And thank you very much for that one. Uh, and also, I would like to say thank you to who joined and had a chance to see uh, and uh, listen to Sondes Garbi here and uh, with her fantastic ideas and suggestions. And they were all great. 
And I hope we will have a chance to have different uh, session in the future. And that's all. And also, I would like to say thank you for all our listeners that you come here. That's all uh, for tonight. And Sondes Garbi was with us in uh, Teacher Talks 52. And we are going to have another session next week uh, on the same day at the same time. And keep us watching. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And until next time, take care of yourself, everybody. And good night and good evening and good morning, wherever you are. And also good afternoon. And bye and peace. <laughs> bye bye, Sunday. Yeah, Thank everyone. you. Bye bye. Bye bye.